Can you tell us what happened the first time you saw the band magnets on a Qantas flight? Uh, as with all long flights, you get bored. And I get bored enough to even read the in-flight magazine uh, and the duty-free uh, magazine just to compare what I see as prices on other airlines. But in this case, I came to the page which illustrated nanodots, which I recognised straight away as uh, under a different name as buckyballs, which had been banned in the US several years before. And the problem with uh, bucky dots, or bucky uh, and nano dots, is simply that they're small enough to be ingested easily, and they stick together. And as such, they uh, form a blockage across the intestine of a young child that can be particularly dangerous. Australia banned them three uh, three years before that, and the Gazette of that. But apparently, the people that uh, sourced the magnets had not realised that the ban was a virtually universal. And while it was originally banned because of its danger to children, because of its um, the ability for it to be accessed by children, because it just it will roll around, it's small, it's uh, attractive overall, then the Australian authorities banned it completely. As did the uh, the US and uh, the Europe. Canada, Japan. So when I arrived in Hong Kong, the following day I phoned Qantas because I've been a long time member of the Qantas Frequent Flyer Club uh, to alert them that they had a product which was not compliant with the safety regulations in several countries in the world, but more notably in Australia. The response was a little dismissive and I wasn't happy with that and to be 100% sure that I was right, I phoned uh, my contact here in Australia and asked him uh, whether I was right with my facts and he assured me that I was and sent me the information on it. So I phoned them uh, back again and got much the same answer. About eight or nine days later, um, I saw it was, it was still there and on the website and with uh, no comment about uh, the being withdrawn from sale, so I rang again, and this time they told me the supplier of the goods, and said that they relied upon the supplier of the goods for their information as regards safety, which I thought was fairly foolish, because Qantas themselves sell it. It's advertised in their magazine with their name, so the um, the risk and the um, the bad publicity that goes along with providing unsafe goods would all be put back to Qantas. Not their supplier, no one knows who that is, so I suggested that they uh, should regard it more seriously. They then, uh, it almost seemed like a second thought, they put me in touch with their supplier, Alpha, and I phoned Alpha. Uh, the response there was markedly different. They were immediately interested as to what I had to say, and as it turned out later in the court documents that I've seen, they reacted immediately, like not within half an hour, but within minutes of the phone call. They were already uh, putting in place a mechanism to withdraw the product from sale. The next thing was that I saw that it was still advertised in their magazine, and it's advertised in other aircraft magazines that have affiliations with, with Qantas. So the next thing I knew was when I was contacted by the Department of Justice here, or CAP, and they asked me if I was the Ian Anderson who had corresponded with Qantas in regard to the unsafe product that they were selling, and they assured them I was. They asked me if I'd be prepared to make a, a statement about it, I just said yes, because I was still anxious to ensure that unsafe product wasn't available on the marketplace, regardless of whether it was sold on an airline or in a retail store. So they, they came to see me, we sat down, went through the, the statement, it was typed up, uh, sent back to me, they went through to ensure that there were no errors. I provided them with all of my correspondence, backwards and forwards to Qantas, because I'd followed up these things with an email and that uh, obviously still had their the emails and their responses. So that was all provided to the department and the next thing I knew was that they were going to court, which happened in December and the, the findings were handed down on December 24th. 
which showed that Qantas had not fulfilled their responsibilities in regard to ensuring that product offered was safe. Uh, they had uh, in evidence that was shown that they had they responded to later V, but they had now put in place a check system and a, uh, a number of people involved to ensure that all products that came through were now uh, evaluated for safety. What lessons do you think there might be for companies that do sell consumer goods out of this particular case? If you're unsure, ask someone who knows. Not someone that perhaps knows, but ask a recognised authority. And if they tell you that it has a problem, then check and verify that. It's no point in just going blindly on and assuming that everyone will do the right thing. Because with the best will in the world, mistakes happen, people don't think uh, it through, and they just tick it off and on it goes onto the, the trolley or onto the counter. The penalties are quite large and they can be huge if it uh, depends on how the, the court looks at it. If the court looks at it as uh, the same penalty should apply to every transaction, that is when it can become quite large. As it was, it was uh, 200000 for Qantas, which is not pocket money, and 50000 for the supplier. And the reason for the difference was that the supplier had showed immediate concern and, and accepted its responsibility to uh, withdraw the product and, and act promptly. Uh, Qantas had assumed they'd be okay, and that's, that's to me a very foolish attitude to take because people rely on a, a company the size of Qantas has the resources to be able to ensure that what they offer for sale is uh, safe and is um, not likely to injure a small child. And that's uh, where the whole, the whole concept of product safety must come about. First off, is it safe? And if it's not safe, do something about it straight away. Don't wait. Do it now. Uh, with a banned product, it's not difficult to work out your compliance. Uh, well, with a banned product, it's a matter of just, you just need to go into the government website. <laughs> it's very, very clearly shown on the website that the thing is banned. It's, there's no excuse for, uh, for delaying any action after that. The first thing you should have done, check the website. This is, this is wrong, let's stop it now. Let's stop one more piece getting into the hands of the public. And then let's go out and, and uh, recall the ones that are there. Because selling it uh, duty-free on an aircraft, it's usually played by, by a credit card, so there is a record of where it is, so it's not hard to recover. Mm. The Australian standards has something that many standards in the world doesn't have and is a real benefit, and that is it's tested for conceivable use or misuse. Many standards only work on the basis of uh, the using it correctly. Mm. Now, kids will find a way of using things that we would never dream of, mm. but we have to. We have to assume that it can be used in different ways and then have to go out and try and find out what those ways are. And that, in that way, then we can be more certain of ensuring that children will be safe.